I haven't had my first cup of coffee, so you'll see me wake up on camera in front of your eyes. How do you generally select your your subjects? You know, people think that the documentaries are about issues and broad ideas and topics that are good for you and things you sort of have to watch. To me, I want to make movies about people, and if people watch the movie and care about those people, then the other stuff will come along with it. So, Malala. Yeah. What, what was it like to meet her for the first time? When you meet her, you feel like the world should know this story and what she stands for, this incredible relationship with her father, this incredibly brave girl. I said, I have to make this movie. And we just sat and talked for three hours with just a microphone, no crew, just her and I talking. Mm -hmm. And through that came these sort of really lovely, intimate stories that I don't think she would have ever told if, if a whole crew was there. And she said that. She goes, well, I've given 100 interviews, but I've never told anyone these stories. The title of the film, yeah. He Named Me, Malala. Yeah. Why did you pick that title? I called it this for a reason. So Malala's father names her after a girl who speaks out and is killed for speaking out. Is Malala her own person? Is, is it, did he decide who she would become or did she, does she have her own self-will? And you have to watch the movie to, to sort of figure out the puzzle of that relationship. If there's an impact you hope uh, you will have with this film, yeah. what will it be? My movies work on two levels. Like on a very personal family level, I would like to have girls all around the country, just like my daughters, see her, meet her, and say, oh, I could be just like her. Like I could be a girl who speaks out for what I believe in and I can make a change in the world. The issue of girls' education is a very important one. Um, it's actually the one thing we know works. You know, if you think about all the complex problems like climate change, a lot of us think it's real and we should do something about it, but the solutions are not so easy. With girls' education, it not only changes her life, you give her all sorts of opportunity, but it changes her family's life. It changes the potential of a whole family, a whole village, a whole city. We know it works, and when we do it, it works. So when you did Inc Inconvenient Truth, yeah. and you saw the, the, the great accolades that came with it, yeah. and the criticisms, yeah. um, what bothered you most? It's interesting, the criticisms for Inconvenient Truth didn't bother me at all, because I knew we were right. Mm -hmm. Some of the criticisms were saying we were overblowing the estimates mm -hmm. of where we were with climate change, the CO2 in the air, the, the consequences on the earth. We were actually pretty moderate. In fact, in almost every place, things were much worse than we said they were. With a movie like Waiting for Superman, which, which criticized some sort of sensitive areas in our public school system, that was harder because I wanted people to accept the nuance of some of the ideas I was putting out, and, and, and often it wasn't understood the way I wanted it to be understood. But I feel like climate change is one of the most important issues of our time. We have to do more. And I now have solar panels in my office. I plug in my electric car. It's not a Prius, it's an electric car. I used to have a Prius. And my car is powered by the sun. Very and cool. you go, what? And all my editing machines, my whole office is powered by the sun. And in five years, it pays for itself. So with either of these films, yeah. was there a moment of satisfaction for you where someone that you didn't expect to be moved or affected by your film called you up or stopped you and said, I was on the other side of this issue, and now I'm here yeah. because of your film. Is well, it? I always feel like Malala changed somebody's life, mm -hmm. or the kid in my movie inspired someone. So I always feel like I'm sort of, I'm the midwife of someone else's mission. Is there someone that, that you've wanted to meet, um, alive or not, that you've been inspired by and would like to have a Rob's Coffee with? You know, I could take out the New York City phone book Pick a page, pick a person. And the great thing about my job is I find everybody interesting.